Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your first Climate Watch update of 2024. And this month we're taking a look at February, but also a sneak peek at how autumn is going to kick off. Now, as we go into the start of February, we actually do have an autumn change, smack bang in the middle of summer. It's going to be for the first few days of the month. But once we get into next week, the first full week of February, we're back to summer-like conditions. So let's try and make sense of it all. On the animated map here for the 1st of February, the dark shading shows low pressure. So there is that autumn-like storm that's gonna pass by New Zealand this coming weekend for the first weekend of February and drives on a big burst of windy weather and then cooler weather as well on the tail end of it. Most of this map shows low pressure zones. Not a lot of high pressure, but this one zone here is pretty stubborn, won't be moving very much. So anywhere between Perth Adelaide and Melbourne, very little in the way of rain coming for the next couple of weeks. And that high pressure belt will try to come over to New Zealand. You can see it a little bit up here. And in fact, that yellow shading you see in the Tasman is the reason why that low can't uh, deepen much and also isn't likely to come down towards us. So we'll try and make sense of everything, kicking off with how we're shaping up on the 1st of February. So the first week of February kicks off as I just mentioned, high pressure south of Australia, a little bit of it coming into the Tasman, but all of this is low pressure around us. And obviously to the east, we've had that low stuck there all week and the low, the storm down here in the Southern Ocean tracking by for the first few days of February. So it's certainly an unsettled map, but the high pressure zone here, that is going to be the driving force for us in New Zealand as well. But because it's well to the west of us, classic El Nino setup where we're sort of on the edges of it, and the windy weather comes and goes. As we get into the second week, no real change. Again, high pressure parts south of Australia stretching out to New Zealand for the most part, but in true El Nino style, it's not properly over us. And so we end up with this windy southwester between the highs and the lows, westerly winds blowing along here, and then to the north, easterly winds blowing along. The tropics don't look anything like El Nino. With all this low pressure at the moment, potential tropical cyclones, any of these lows could form into a storm. And the high pressure zones coming out of Australia, they are keeping New Zealand safe and protected for now from any of these dropping southwards. But they are all just sitting there. And obviously with the storms in the Southern Ocean, that just fuels those windy westerlies around the South Island and getting up towards the lower North Island. As we get to the third week, one of the things you might have noticed, the arrow here, that easterly wind, it carries on. So it means that uh, those in the top of the country aren't always getting the westerlies that the other end of the country are getting. So easterly winds carry on due to the big block of low pressure. And yes, that could be a tropical cyclone. It's not locked in this far out. But any of these lows could form into a tropical cyclone. So that's why it is well worth keeping a close eye on them in the weeks ahead. But this high pressure belt coming out of the south of Australia, that is probably our biggest guiding force and will keep the summer weather conditions carrying on. But there's a lot of um, uncertainty with these lows around us and it brings in what we call variables, which means while we can see a mostly dry pattern with these highs coming our way, all of the lows around it mean that there is always that chance one could sneak through and change your forecast, make it much wetter than it was expected to be. Let's have a look at this app. We've just we've just launched it. This app, the new, you can just use your um, QR code on your phone and download it now. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up at this point is because it's really good for giving you wind alerts and temperature alerts. So if you're um, you know in the harvesting world or if you're a farmer or grower, certainly please take a look at this app. It is well worth it, and it gives you the the preparation for windy events or cold events or frosts. You can set your own criteria. This is the uh, latest on El Nino. This is where we've been. So it's peaked over here uh, as we went through the later part of spring. It actually wasn't at its peak around New Year's Eve, which is what the forecast was. But hey, whatever, it's still, it's still here with us, although you probably don't feel it so much in your weather pattern. And it should be gone at some point in autumn towards winter, which means autumn is likely to be more autumn-like. What we said in spring last year, El Nino makes spring sort of like a hat on a hat. Autumn's the same. It just sort of increases those westerly winds a little bit more. Take a look at the uh, sea surface temperatures around the Pacific. Now, this is where we measure El Nino. It's still above average by two, three degrees, maybe even more. But this is what is so surprising. All the warmer conditions in the Coral Sea, the Tasman Sea, and north of New Zealand, and also offshore from New Zealand, that makes this complicated. That's the reason why we're getting rain when we shouldn't really, because 
The base foundation is still El Nino, and then you throw on top of that some warmer than usual conditions in our part of the world, and it really does complicate it. For farmers, it's good news. Uh, if you're trying to harvest grapes, it's probably not the best news because you don't want these areas of rain around. This is the localized marine um, heat wave brought to you by the Moana Project. And as you can see, most of the country is in the normal to none. We don't have a marine heat wave. So despite all that warmer than average um, coastal water offshore, our coastline itself, not too bad. It's only a little bit warmer than average around Wairarapa. Soil, well, the soil moisture levels, uh, this is the departure from normal, shows you that we have got a lot of wetter than usual conditions across the central part of the North Island from the west coast surprisingly over to the east coast, which is why we're getting a lot of people in Hawke's Bay talk about how green the grass is at the moment. You can see why. A lot of thunderstorms, downpours, gives that Swiss cheese look where it's dry and these sort of little spots around it because those downpours were isolated and they only kind of hit one area and then they're gone. Driest places are wider up are Wellington, Marlborough, and parts of Canterbury. Again, Canterbury has got that Swiss cheese effect. Some areas are wet, some areas are not. But the upcoming forecast does look as though these areas that are driest now will get drier with more windy westerlies and that high pressure belt that keeps coming our way. So let's take a look at rainfall. Here we are for the big picture for the next two weeks. And the areas in white show you where there is very little in the way of rain. In fact, pretty much none here for Adelaide for the next two weeks. In the New Zealand area, uh, that high pressure belt streaming across the Tasman is the reason why you're seeing a lot of blues and greens and yellows, which is one millimetre to maybe 30 millimetres. And that's over two weeks. So that would be welcome but it's certainly not as wet as it's been uh, unless you're on the west coast and most of that rain is coming in just over the next few days. So here's a closer look at what I just showed you. Most of that rain from that Southern Ocean storm in the first weekend of February, but you can see a few showers around in the yellows and golds, but uh, you can see this on our website in more detail, but basically what it's saying is the top of New Zealand and the eastern side aren't looking as wet as the west and the southwestern corner, Southland, Fiordland, West Coast, those areas are likely to get most of the rain. Now this is a bit of an experimental map we're trialling. Uh, this shows the departure from normal for rainfall for the month of February. What it shows in New Zealand is there might be some more wet weather in the north and the east, more than we we're expecting. That could be some good news for some of you, although maybe not all of you. As I say, people who are harvesting grapes at the moment don't want rain around. Now Australia still leans wetter than average. They're getting a lot of thunderstorms. And just because it's that bluey green color everywhere doesn't mean everyone in that zone gets it. It just means the risk for thunderstorms is pretty much in that area. And heavy rain, Papua New Guinea, they are leaning much wetter than average. Now, as we take that out for the next few months, extrapolate, um, you can see that Australia goes back to drier than it should be. And New Zealand goes the other way. We lean wetter. Now, that could be an early sign that autumn will be what I just said before, a hat on a hat. You're going to get windier weather coming through from the Southern Ocean, and that comes out through here, but it does drive in more wet weather for the New Zealand area. There's also the chance of one of those tropical lows coming down our way. None of this is locked in. We live in the roaring 40s all the way up, as I say, to about Whanganui, so our weather can be very changeable. And with all that low pressure around, it certainly means there is a decent chance of rain coming into the New Zealand area for the next couple of months. But that, that little area of high pressure coming out of Australia that will continue to dominate our weather flow and to some degree limits how far north those southern events can go or how far south those tropical lows can get. Please download our new alerting app. It is free to download, but there are paid alerting services within it. If you run a, a business, a small business, a farm, for example, or an orchard, you may find that these alerts, just $6.99 a month, you set the criteria and you also get push notifications to your phone if you're on that pro service uh, out of net service as well. So it's the full package. Please download it. And if you need more information about what I've talked about, just visit our websites, ruralweather.co.nz or weatherwatch.co.nz or download our new app. It's in the news section of that and you can see all the maps we've put up in uh, a little bit easier to see maybe if it's not moving. That is all from me. We'll see you again in one month with our next Climate Watch update.